Over the last couple years on Change the Shed, I've shown all kinds of projects, and in many of them, I'm using more than one strand of a tapestry yarn at a time. This is called a weft bundle. Most tapestry yarns are fairly thin, and you need to use more than one strand at once to fill the space between the warps appropriately. There are various ways to manage your weft bundle. A lot of people use things like abusan bones or butterflies to wrap the bundle around as you're passing that tool through the warp. Other people use yarn needles um, attached to their yarn. Other people just let the wefts hang if you're doing things with lots of small color areas. You don't need to use a tool. You can just use a long piece of yarn. There are lots of other embroidery um, things that people use to hold their wefts, and we'll look at some of those in this video. There are various ways to make your bundles. How many strands and what yarns you're using may influence the way you choose. The first thing I'd like to say though is that it doesn't matter which way the yarn segments line up. So say I pull um, a piece of yarn off this cone and I want it to be an arm's length long. I don't have to match this end of the yarn with this end of the yarn. I can just make it this long, go to the end, cut that yarn, and then the yarn is turning around and going the other direction. It doesn't matter. The twist of the yarn will be the same. So I have heard people say, no, no, you have to take the original end over here and line that up with a new end. I mean, if you're really concerned, you can do that, but I'm, I swear the twist will be the same and it doesn't matter. So don't worry about that. The easiest way to make your bundles is just to pull off a length of yarn and then match it the number of times you need. If you need your bundle to be all one color, then you just pull off, say, I want three arm lengths, and then I cut it. So there's one, and I just match that length, do it again. Here's two, and then here's my third one. Probably if I'm using lengths that are this long, I'm going to wind them onto something, some kind of a bobbin. In this case, let's say I'm using a tapestry bobbin, I might just wind this length right onto this bobbin, and then I'm ready to weave once it's all on there. If you are using two different colors, for example, say I have a, a bundle that is this darker color and this lighter color of just a Ray's uh, tapestry yarn, I could uh, pull off two of those at once. Again, say I want a length of yarn that's about that long, and maybe I'm using four strands for my eight ends per inch weaving. So then I just cut that. I still have this with the other bundle and I just do another length and cut it off. And then again, I can wind this onto whatever I'm going to use to hold the yarn, or perhaps this is a short enough length that I just use it just like this. If the tapestry yarn you're using is fairly slippery and you're using um, more than about two strands, no matter what the yarn is, you're not going to want to use butterflies. They just get crazy tangled up. Instead, consider using uh, tapestry bobbins for high warp looms or looms where your warp is vertical and abusan bones for looms where your warp is horizontal. I also often use very small bobbins like this on small little looms when I want a way to just hold the yarn or I have a yarn that's fragile that I don't want to get um, dragged through the warp all the time. So the small bobbins are actually nice for these little lap looms also. Alternatively, you can use any of a great number of tools to manage the weft. If you're weaving very small pieces, you probably don't even need a tool at all. You can just leave the end of the yarn hanging off of the uh, weaving. So some other options might be uh, stick shuttles. These are um, available and usually they're larger than this, but you can wind them like this or you can wind them around the edge like this. Those are um, a fine way to carry your yarn on some looms. 
You could use a similar tool to this is called a netting needle. That's what this is. And you wind your yarn on here. And uh, you know, I've had these come in larger sizes and I've had people um, use them on large or small looms. There's a bunch of different embroidery floss yarn carriers. This is just a card. Um, this one is cardboard, but you can get these that are um, plastic. And I've seen people use these for tapestry weft. And then this is another thing that I've seen people use for tapestry weft. It's a little embroidery uh, yarn holder, but you would wrap the yarn um, on this little thing and then this folds over so it protects your yarn and it makes a fairly thin Little disc that can go through the weft and then you just pull your yarn out or through the warp and you pull your yarn out like that And of course there are any numbers of just plain old yarn needles. This is the Susan Bates 5 inch um, Yarn needle. I really like this for weaving on Small looms mostly is what I use this for, or just a plain old metal yarn needle. Or even sometimes you can find these plastic ones and they will work fine. The yarn doesn't stay in these quite as well as in these metal ones, but you should be able to find these all over the place. So I can already hear you asking, what do I do when the strands in my weft bundle don't line up? I've had lots of students get frustrated because they see that there's unevenness in their weaving. I often have students start with a strand of yarn that's just one strand, so like a thicker weight yarn that fills the space between the warps well. But most tapestry yarns are thinner than that, and we eventually get to a place where we want to start mixing colors in the weft bundle. And so that leads us to this question of texture. What do I do when there are little bumps on the surface of my weaving? I did do a blog post all about this and I will link to that under this video. The gist of that blog post is though that this is fiber and some amount of irregularity and texture in the surface of your work is actually not a bad thing. So at some point you're just gonna have to embrace that it isn't perfect. So it is true, yes, if you are very careful as you're wrapping your bone or your bobbin with your weft bundle, um, you can get it on there quite smoothly and that will help as it rolls off in the weaving uh, to get all those strands evenly placed in there. But with some yarns, that's really difficult. If the yarn is quite slippery, there's not a lot of fuzziness to it, it won't grab its neighbor yarn and it will act a little bit unruly. There is a point at which you just have to accept that as part of the texture of your tapestry. If you don't have the ability to accept that in your heart, you might go with a slightly fuzzier yarn. If there's some fuzz to the surface of the tapestry, it tends to hide some of those imperfections that you're worried about. So now that you know how to bundle your wefts, have you considered mixing colors? You can put different colored yarns in a weft bundle, which can create some really magical effects. Color is really fun. If you'd like some more help with how to manage color and changing the colors in your weft bundle, I have some online classes that can help you figure that out. I will link to that below the video. Happy weaving!